Hi everybody, in this episode of Flip Teacher Professional Learning, we're going to take a closer look at setting up your new Google Form. Now you might recall that in the previous video, we simply took a look at each of the question types. This one we're actually gonna take a look at actually setting up a brand new form from scratch. Now one of the key things that you need to be aware of with Google Forms is that wherever you are in your Google Drive, when you select new Google Form, that is where that Google Form will be located. So if you want that form in a particular folder, it is best to be in that form folder at that point in time. So for example, if I'm happy for it just to be out in my drive, I would be here. But if I wanted it inside this particular unit that I'm working on here, I would need to be inside that unit. You can go to your Google Drive, select new, select more, and select forms, and it will bring up a default, a blank Google form for you to start with. So this is what you're looking at to start off with. Now, you'd notice that there's a lot of untitled. We need to give things a name. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna give your form a title. I'm just gonna put in test. Uh, test form for the purposes of this video, but put in a name for your form. You can give the form a description so you can explain what the purpose of the form is, but you don't have to do that. That's that's an optional. Other thing as well is that we've given the form a title here, but the actual file title up here in the top left hand corner is still blank. It still says untitled form. Now if I click on that, it will automatically pull across whatever you have put in this box here. So let's take a look at that. Straight away, it's pulled that across because it assumes that you want to call the file by the form name. And then of course you need to make sure that this thing here, uh, all changes saved in Drive, obviously make sure that's always up to date. So we're not gonna worry about adding in a new question at this point, we wanna get the look of the form right. So at the moment it's a fairly stark looking form. We've got some dark purple, we've got a light sort of gray color here. These options in the top right hand corner, this is where we can uh, do a few changes for that. So this color palette here, quite simply that allows us to change the color scheme uh, for our form. The other thing it allows us to do is in the bottom right hand corner is a photo option. So this allows you instead of having a color you can have a photo or an image of some sort there are some stock photos available in different categories you can also upload a photo or if you have some photos already on an album in your google account you can select one of those as well obviously you need to make sure that you choose something that fits the uh, fits the theme of your google form but the update will go through and that's what it looks like now again you might have you might recall from the previous video that there is a preview button this one here this allows you to have a look at what the form will look like to respondents when you hit publish so that's what it looks like at the moment. Now a few other options. The gear wheel of course is as always is our settings. This has gives you a bit of control over who has access to it, what type of form it is, that kind of thing. So let's take a look. There are three tabs, general, presentation and quizzes. Now general, if you're signed into a uh, an at education account or to a domain account of your own, you can actually restrict who has access to that form to people within that system. So if I was logged into my DOE at education account, I could actually restrict that Google form to people with an at education account. You can simply tick or untick that. You can collect the email address. That does mean that the respondent needs to be signed into their account to be able to complete the form and you can limit it to one response if you want to. Down the bottom you can decide whether respondents will be able to edit their response after they've hit submit and whether or not they will be able to see a summary of the responses. I'm not really sure what, what that looks like so you can just hover over the question mark and it tells you that the summary will be visible to all form respondents. Obviously you need to make sure you click save whenever you change anything in here. Presentation, what will it actually look like? Will we have a progress bar to show respondents how far through the form they are? Will we shuffle the question order? That one may be useful if it's a quiz, but if you're just collecting information, you know, get to know you type survey at the start of the year with your students, you probably don't want to shuffle that and whether or not there'll be a link to submit another response. I tend to leave that one ticked because you never know if you're gonna have all of your devices working in the classroom. And if you don't, it's easier to have that ticked have one student complete it, hit submit another response and pass it across to the next one. And you can of course put in a custom confirmation message that the form, the Google form, the response has been received. The quizzes section here, I'm gonna go through that in a little bit more detail in another video. In a nutshell, this is where you can set up grading and auto marking and uh, scoring if you wanna use Google form as a formative assessment or as a summative assessment type. For now, thanks for watching.